The people who built the internet had no idea that Facebook and Amazon and all this was going to come. It's kind of how we are. Like we're just we're building this this platform, and it's like, well, let's see let's see where this goes. With open source tech and decentralized tech, all of the code is open. You can take other people's code, give them credit for it, but then also innovate on that because you've you've been able to see how it was built. Imagine how fast Web two would work um, in terms of innovation if Facebook didn't need to acquire Instagram. They could have just looked at their code and implemented Instagram into Facebook. Without that whole process, that's what's happening right now in DeFi. Everyone's able to see what the, what each other are doing and say like, "Wow, that's a great idea. We should implement that, but also do this." So the innovation is just kind of compounding, and that's why crypto and DeFi is it's impossible to follow everything because it's just moving so fast. But it's because of the open source nature of everything、um, that people are able to do that. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments. All of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the Crypto Slate community. Subscribe now at cryptoslate.com/edge. Dear crypto community and blockchain boys across the globe, welcome back to Crypto Nights, the No BS Blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest, Dan Reeser, CMO at Akala Network. We're going to talk about what could be the most important topic of Q4 2021: crowd loans on the Polkadot chain. Why it's important, how to do it, with some tips. So stay tuned to the very end and enjoy the interview. Woo! So Dan, the first question I will have to ask you is, what if my grandma Susie was in the room and she was like, "What is a Kala Network? <laughs> How would you explain it to my grandma?" That's a tough one. <laughs>、um, yeah, so I, I think a lot of times I start with Polkadot、um, before we get into a Kala, since it's kind of like the what we're building on. So I, I think this is necessary to just give background on Polkadot. So. Everyone here knows Bitcoin and Ethereum.、Um, Vitalik wrote the white paper for Ethereum, but many people don't realize that the white paper was actually implemented and coded by Gavin Wood.、Um, so Gavin Wood built Ethereum. He invented the Solidity programming language that's still used today.、Um, he invented the Ethereum virtual machine. We all hear constantly about EVM compatible, EVM compatible. The EVM was built by this guy,、um, Gavin Wood, who then went on to realize that there was a lot of scalability challenges with Ethereum. Um, so he went on to actually leave Ethereum and came up with this whole concept of Polkadot that I'll walk you through today. We're building this decentralized network that doesn't have influence or risk of third parties like interacting with the, the the financials or the data that we're using on the internet. So, as we saw, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp all went down because of the risk of a centralized network that Facebook was running. This type of a network is run by a whole world of different servers, run by people and organizations that really can't go down because there's so many people kind of running that network. And then we're building a financial network on top of a de the, the decentralized internet or Web three, as people might call it. So, I think for for your for your grandma or for your aunt, that would probably be the easiest、uh, description. Very easy for me to understand. At least I hope grandma, you got it as well. <laughs> yeah. And that leads me to like asking you, Dan, like what made you fall in love with this Web 3.0 space and build what you're building today? Be a part of the Polkadot ecosystem. What、yeah. makes your heart beat、uh, faster than it usually does? I actually I had a class.、Um, I did a one year master's in information systems, and I still remember the day we had a class about. Like Tor and the deep web and Bitcoin, and I was like, "This is crazy."、Um, so I went home. I remember like downloading、um, the onion, like Tor Onion, and like going into this whole world, and and it was just like, <laughs> it was pretty eye opening. So I started. I had like six months off before I started working and started. I remember watching、um, Andre, what's his name,、uh, Antonopoulos. I, I was watching all his videos and just taking notes, studying Bitcoin. Um, back in 2013, and then had just kept following it as I started in the pharmaceutical industry, 
And then um, as I started finally making a little bit of money, I was investing a little bit in, in things like Bitcoin just with my paycheck. And then I, was, I decided to leave the corporate world and get an MBA. And I had, again, about, uh, I had six months off. So I flew to BTC Miami, January 2018, um, found a pre-MBA internship, took that and, and went to Austin. And then there I started, I got an offer to start full time. So I scrapped the MBA plans, went full time crypto, led their marketing for a year and a half. And then that led me to Web3 Foundation because um, I kind of saw what was coming with Polkadot. Went there for a year and a half and launched Kusama, I launched Polkadot. And then following that, I wanted to go kind of one layer up in the tech stack. So what was coming on Polkadot was things like Akala. So um, I had been working with the Akala team kind of on the side a little bit and helping them out and went to full-time discussions and been here since uh, February this year. So i um, been having a blast. Uh, it's definitely a blast for us all. You know, yeah. the highest highs, sometimes the lowest lows, yeah. <laughs> a combination of emotions. But Austin, by the way, I heard is super cool these days. It's the new Silicon Valley, right? Mm -hmm. I think everyone's going to Austin. It's Austin's cool, awesome. Right? Yep. I have a question. So you had that specific moment in time where you had to make a decision. You know, you could have gone with Web 3.0. You could have gone towards Ethereum Foundation, consensus, different blockchains. Mm -hmm. So I must ask you, why Web 3 and why Polkadot? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, to me, it was a combination of, I, I had been in crypto for about a year and a half and I realized then how important the tech was, honestly. Like before that, you don't, you're, you're kind of on the outside and you don't know as much about what's going on with the tech, but I started realizing like, wow, what Polkadot's building is incredibly impressive and complex, which is why it's taken four or five years to, to launch. Um, but, but just as importantly, or even more importantly, the leader of that, um, Gavin Wood, I, I think is the, best developer in all of crypto. He's Look what he's single-handedly added to the world in terms of value. He, he implemented Vitalik's white paper. He built Ethereum, the first version, in only three weeks. Um, and then he realized that Ethereum wasn't going to scale, it was going to have some challenges. Like the foresight of that back in 2015, 2016, to see what was going to happen now with all the gas fees and all of this, he's, he's brilliant. So that's the kind of person that I wanted to follow and I know there's a lot of developers at Parity following him and a lot of parachain teams like us that are that are in this ecosystem because of what he and the, the researchers and developers at Web3 Foundation and Parity have kind of enabled for all of us. That's super cool. And in, in, enabling DeFi, you, you mentioned this earlier, which I think is a topic that really moves you and touches you personally, is the fact that you want to enable DeFi for all, right? You're telling me that there's so many like different obstacles. And as you mentioned with Ethereum, you have the gas prices is quite exclusive in the sense it's for the rich, the tech savvy, et cetera, et cetera. Like what is your future vision for DeFi and how would you like it to be? So at Akala, what we're building is a, a layer one blockchain, just like Ethereum or Solana or, or, or the others, but it's customized at the blockchain layer for DeFi specifically. What that's enabling us to do is start to realize that there's there's huge opportunities outside of crypto that we can help to bring kind of DeFi as a service to them. Um, so one example of that is Current.com. They're a New York-based fintech company with about 3 million customers. And they actually were crypto native. They tried to start in crypto um, and then asked themselves, how do we get crypto in the hands of millions of people? And I think it was back in 2015 or 16. And the answer to them at the time was, well, if we want to get crypto in the hands of millions of people, we need to start in fintech because crypto is just not ready. So they built this application. It's for a savings account for um, people that are, I think, newer to the newer and younger um, in the financial system. And their CTO actually reached out to us and, and had been watching the, the progression of crypto from Ethereum to the launch of Polkadot and then finally the launch of Akala and was like, this is this is it. It's time to bring all of our customers that we've built for current to these these DeFi yields. So. What we're building with them is a product that will be able to bring yield to them, to their customers within their existing app without having to touch things like private keys or MetaMask um, in a seamless way that they're used to. But on the back end, there's dollars flowing to and from Akala going through our yield engine that we've built to leverage things like dot staking returns, compound and, and others. So really excited for that. And this is just the first of many examples that we're going to be implementing as far as fintech integrations on Akala. Um, and then as far as your other question, as far as like the, the passion for this, um, it was something that I've been thinking about actually this week. I, I've been trying to learn more about what's going on with Axie and it, all this like crazy 
um, gaming success that they've had um, and the impact that they've had on individual lives in places like Southeast Asia, the Philippines, yeah. really cool. And I'm sure it's extremely rewarding for their founders to see that they're, they're having an impact on people uh, with the tech that they've built. So I'm thinking about that in the same way. I would love for Akala to be adopted by teams like Current, um, other teams like Luno who are in um, you know, Africa, Southeast Asia. There's so many examples of that where we can start to have an impact on individuals and families, which is really exciting for me and kind of one of the reasons, like you know, one of my goals in, in, in life is to be able to have an impact and leave a legacy on people, so. That's a great purpose, yeah, the yeah. greater good, as we say. And yeah. yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Axie Infinity because they just, the, the actual CEO was here just before you and oh, he's nice. in the same chair. And he mentioned something that seemed extremely positive for Polkadot and Parachains. He said that because none of the blockchains as of today is, has been proven to be scalable enough to really create the open world DeFi that you want, he said it's much better to have your own private chain or side chain. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you see the parachains on Polkadot? Does it make sense to you? Are there any pros and cons of switching from going to uh, having your own parachain versus being on a public like? Chain. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not technical, so I'll do my best. But I know, like private chains, um, and I, I believe this is how even like NBA Top Shots was doing it. These individual networks that are private and they kind of own the the validator nodes, and it's there aren't, probably aren't that many validator nodes. Those can operate much much faster. Um, but you but you have the downside of it not being fully decentralized, um, which is kind of part of the you know the ethos of the industry. Um, with Polkadot, we have, we'll have this whole kind of connected universe of blockchains that are customized for specific applications like DeFi with Akala. It gets more scalable or, or scales better as more and more parachains um, launch together. We also get to have kind of cross-chain interactions with data or value, um, NFTs, tokens, whatever it might be with each other. So whatever another team is building on their parachain can interact with ours. And I think even more exciting is when you take it up a level and you have the next kind of phase is going to be cross-chain applications where this, this one application, you see it as the user, but in the background, it's, it's probably plugging into three, five, seven different um, blockchains for, for, different, um, for different purposes. So um, yeah, there's benefits to both. There's trade-offs and benefits to really any, any tech stack that you're using in crypto. I appreciate the honesty. And this kind of leads me to a talk that he just had yeah. right now at Token 2049 on the stage, which was very well received. People are lining up to come and talk to you after that. One of the hottest topics in the game right now, crowd loans. Yeah. Well, once again, if you don't mind me putting my grandma Susie on a very general, easy level, uh -huh. can you explain to everyone out there what is a crowd loan and why you think it's such an innovative approach? I've had to explain this to my family. So, <laughs> okay, cool. so what I, I've gone with a different, few different examples, but I think one that makes sense. My mom actually is in the real estate industry, so um, I, I've compared it now to like auctions, like a home auction. Um, when it comes to a home auction, there's two way, or there's really one, only one way that you can um, bid in that auction, and it's from your own pocket. You know, so you go to the auction, say the home is, you're hoping to get it for 100,000 and that's your max. If someone else bids 120, you're kind of out. You're out, yeah. The, imagine if you could do like a crowdfunded bid in that auction where you could come, but you could pool money from your friends, your family, your neighbors, so that the moment that person bids 120, you already are ready to go 150 because you have the power of the crowd instead of the individual. Um, that is exactly how the Polkadot parachain slot auctions work. So. On Polkadot, you can't just openly launch uh, a blockchain. You kind of have to work for it and win this auction against other teams. But when you come in as a team um, to win this auction, you have those same two options. You can bid with a single account. Say you're a team that has a lot of DOT, which is what the token required to bid in the auction. That's fine, you can do that and you wouldn't be involving your community. The second and more common option that we're doing at Akala is what's called a crowd loan. So it's, it, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a loan from a huge crowd of people, probably hopefully over 50,000 people, where they're all contributing DOT. Just like I was saying with the family, friends, and the, this home auction, they're contributing DOT to us as a team in support of us so that we can have a larger bid in that auction and hopefully win um, the first auction on Polkadot, um, hopefully, hopefully soon. We don't know exactly when yet. In return for that loan, they, they agree to lock their tokens, their DOT tokens, and in return they get 
um, a, a ratio of ACA, a Kala's native token, to every dot that they contributed. Um, so that's, that's that. And then after two years, which is the duration of this lease, it's kind of like a lease on an apartment. After the two years, then all the dot contributed and that loan is returned, which is why it's called a loan, because it's only temporary. Um, so after that, they get all their dot back, they would retain and, and keep the ACA that they were, they were given. And then it's up to us after that to figure out how to renew that slot to kind of remain alive. So in our case, we have a treasury. It's kind of like a, a DAO, if, if your viewers are, are familiar with that. And we have this DAO with now over $60 million in DOT that's ready already for two years from now when we need to renew that slot. We can use the DOTs in that to, to bid in the next auction. And then every two years, we'll be going through that process. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how, how it cool works. How cool is that? I mean, that is yeah. so innovative. You know, it's like, it's investing without investing. It's a loan, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it's absolutely mind blowing how cool this is and all the buzz it's getting, which is well deserved. Mm -hmm. I would love to ask you the when, but obviously you cannot <laughs> tell us there. I don't know. I wish <laughs> I knew too. <laughs> what do you like the most about this loan? Is the fact that people are just giving a loan and and getting you know tokens in, in exchange? Is it the fact that there are multiple milestones where you can go for other loans as mm -hmm. like kind of like a Series A, B, C, right? Mm -hmm. What do you like the most out of this whole concept? Definitely the um, the the community involvement in the token distribution aspect of it. So if, if we're able to get um, 50, 60,000 accounts or people to contribute dots to this, that means all of those people will have ACA. Um, and that means we're basically starting and bootstrapping this huge community of people who not only will hold the token and can participate in governance and all of that, but also people who can actually go in and use the applications built on Akala. So whether they're applications built in our EVM environment, um, which will probably be the, the most kind of um, flourishing part of our, our chain for the, for the you know, shorter term. But then as we go, there'll be more and more native um, dApps built on Akala that these people can use um, because they're kind of already onboarded into the ecosystem. So it's, it's a great way to get people involved, educate people on what we're building um, versus trying to have to do that without uh, an event like this. That, that's so cool. And obviously, I, I won't ask you for specific companies, but just generally speaking, for those who go in and they start realizing, oh, I want to be a part of the Polkadot ecosystem. I want to support these projects. I'm very happy to give a loan for 24 months or two years. Like, what are for you, when choosing like the companies that you want to support, what are some things that you like to look, like in, uh, look at in terms of criteria, like X, Y, Z, or some tips for people starting this for the first time? Yeah, it's, that's kind of a tough question it's across tough the question, whole industry. Yeah. It's hard to judge, I guess, just off the top of my head. So looking at the team uh, is probably the one of the most important and looking, even if you want to, like go to their LinkedIn's, like look at their experience. What have they done before? Um, I don't know, looking at, say, for example, Polkadot events or um, Substrate events. Who are the, who are the d developers presenting at those events, talking about what they're building? Um, being being showcased by by those events because of the quality of what they've built, um, that would be another. Looking at community size is a bit uh, risky because it's it's easy for people to like build up these huge telegrams or huge Twitter followings. But um, looking at quality of content, like on the Twitter, are you um, or Twitter or YouTube? Like, are you able to go to their channels and actually learn about what they're doing? Are they out there? you know, educating and talking about their products. Um, I, I, that would be a few few kind of things. Those to, are to keep. great tips to start with, you know, because when yeah. I saw the list and I wanted to to contribute with the crowd loans on Kasama, I was like, oh my God, there are a few projects, which one, which one? Yeah, it's but hard. a great place to start, right? Uh -huh. um, and then I'd love to ask you like, Dan, like obviously crowd loans is probably going to be the, one of the biggest highlights of Q4 2021. If we can fast forward a little bit to 2022, mm -hmm. what are some things that you're looking forward to? What are some developments that you think could really help us grow as one community? And as you're saying, opening this world to everybody. Yeah, I think the most exciting thing is to see what the next step is after all these parachains launch. So once we win a slot, we'll go live. And then that's when applications and users can start coming. All the liquidity will start coming. Um, so that is really where like the, the Polkadot launch will ultimately be um, completed. So watching teams like Akala, like we're going to be launching um, all of our products. So we'll have our stablecoin launching similar to DAI. That will be able to be used to by any other parachain that's also live. So if they have a DEX or if they have 
um, uh, you know, a real world asset platform or something like that, all these teams will be able to leverage that. Um, one of the products I'm, I'm most excited about is, um, is actually two. So our EVM is going to be really exciting to watch because people are going to be coming to build in the, in the Ethereum environment thinking that they only can do what they did on Ethereum. But Brian Chen and our, our team on the, the development side have customized this EVM environment to also be able to leverage Substrate. So it's e Ethereum and Substrate, um, which is this whole new framework that Gavin Wood created super powerful that's what took you know a, a few years to fully develop um, so being able to do dApps in the evm plus leveraging substrate will be exciting and then the other product that will be interesting to watch um, and, and probably rapidly growing in tvl will be our liquid staking product so dot right now i think in my presentation i, I had about 64 percent of dot is staked right now but as you may know, when you stake your DOT, it's locked away. And sure, you're earning interest, but it's, it's kind of useless besides that. Yeah. With liquid staking, you're going to be able to stake your DOT through Akala and then get this L DOT or liquid DOT token in return. Mm -hmm. So this token is free to use while your DOT is still earning. And then you can take this L DOT and use it for other things within DeFi. If you want to collateralize it for a loan, if you want to provide liquidity in the deck. So, this will be used um, on Akala by users, but also as a product that can be leveraged by the developers building dApps in our EVM, for example. So if you're like a fixed income product and you want to leverage the returns from liquid dot staking, you can do that um, natively because of that substrate and EVM um, interaction. So That's super cool. I mean, this liquidity of collateral is just such a cool concept. Yeah. Really DeFi innovated in that sense compared to traditional markets, right? Yeah. Where you get that. Like you said, that uh, LP, uh, and I and I love to ask you. Like so earlier, I saw something, Dan. I don't think it's something that DeFi hardcore maxis would like. But I saw this business card, and I asked the question, the same question to the previous guest, and it said licensed DeFi, or some say regulated DeFi. Yeah. And some people are like, Ugh, and they, they they kind of like fear a little bit of regulations in 2022. Uh, but does it make sense for you that some companies like? Obviously, Ave and other companies are going towards, you know, regulated DeFi and KYC and all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not a, a legal or regulatory <laughs> expert, but I think it depends a lot on like where people are, um, are domiciled or located as a team. Um, I think for, for Ave and, and I don't know if Uniswap is based in the U.S., but for yeah. teams like that, I think you just have to comply with the local regulations. So that's that's I think what everyone's trying to do right now is just to make sure they're they're taking the guidance that they're given um, and implementing that. One of the, the the challenges right now, I think, for everyone, including people in the U.S., is that when the reg when the the rules are kind of gray, um, it's it's much more difficult to to know what to implement. And I know a lot of people are working directly with um, the the governing bodies to figure out and work together on what makes sense, and then implementing whatever they come up with in those discussions. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, the things will go well. I'm I'm sure we'll have bumps down the road, but it, you know. Long term, just, uh, the future is bright, as we say. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then it's one last question I'd love to ask you. So we talked about 2022. You're talking about the launch, the collateral, the liquid staking. Mm -hmm. um, is there one more thing that you love to share with the community that you're just really excited about? <laughs> um, there's a lot I'm excited about. I mean, I, I really want to see... Um, so first of all, in Polkadot, I'm excited to see there be like 20, 30 parachains live. This is going to scale up to 100 um, and could probably will continue to scale past 100. But I don't think a lot of people even in the industry realize what's coming with, with all these Polkadot parachains because we've seen it's kind of been like layer one season recently, like the Terras and Solanas of the world. But um, there's, there's, you know, tens of new layer ones, these parachains coming on Polkadot that are all going to be in this world together and bridged out to other networks. So that's going to be exciting to watch because it's it's one of those things where like the people who built the internet had no idea that Facebook and Amazon and all this was going to come. It's kind of how we are. Like we're just we're building this this platform and it's like, well, let's see, let's see where this goes. Cause it's it's going to be exciting just to see where the innovation um, happens. And another thing that um, I, I just have been thinking about if you compare it to the Web 2 world um, with open source tech and decentralized tech, all of the code is open, like, like obviously, 
but it's all on GitHub. It's all like you can take other people's code, give them credit for it, but then also innovate on that because you've, you've been able to see how it was built. Imagine if Web2, how fast Web2 would work um, in terms of innovation. If you could, if Facebook didn't need to acquire Instagram, they could have just looked at their code and implemented Instagram into Facebook without that whole process. That's what's happening right now in DeFi. Everyone's able to see what, the, what each other are doing and say like, wow, that's a great idea. We should implement that, but also do this. So the speed of these, the, the innovation is just kind of compounding. And that's why crypto and DeFi is, it's impossible to follow everything because it's just moving so fast. But it's because of the open source nature of everything um, that people are able to do that. Do you like this open source fact that, you know, it's, it feels like some sort of co-opetition, right? Where there are blockchains, proof of stake chains that are competing with each other, but at the same time, like you say, they help elevate each other as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a cool, one of the cool aspects that you see in this? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting aspect because everyone, of course, everyone's competitive and everyone wants to, to get the most adoption and, and, and all of that um, and add the most value. But there's also, especially in, in an environment like Polkadot, like, we, we want every other parachain to be extremely successful because that means it'll help us be successful too. So we're all working together. I know the parachain teams um, as individuals, even we're all, we're all close and kind of like a, a tight knit community. But then we also wanna see the success of every other uh, layer one and, and hopefully the launch of ETH2 eventually um, because that'll all bring more people into the industry, more, more smart minds, more money. Um, yeah. so. It's gonna be fun to watch that over the next, I think, two, two to four years. I'm super pumped, man. I feel like we're so, I'm so grateful that we're in this time of life and just timing is really, really good, isn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And for those watching out there, by the way, if you wanna learn more about Polkadot's decentralized governance, which is very, very unique and very, very cool, we have an interview with Joe Petrosky. Click above and you can catch up and learn more about the Polkadot ecosystem. Question of the week, guys. So, how do you feel about crowd loans? Is it innovative? Do you like it? Yes, no, tell us why. Put it in the comment section below and you will receive a prize. All right, Dan, well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. We've been going back and forth on Telegram and yeah. finally, you know, Destiny has brought us together here in London. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been awesome. fun. It's, it's been, been fun. fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and join us every week premiering at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. See you next week, guys. Bye.